Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and this is a tutorial for people who just got box cutter and they're not willing to wade through hours of tutorials and they'd like just to get to know how to use it real quick. So I'll be discussing that in a second here, but before we talk about that, I'd like to tell you about this gift I have for you. It is a completely free hydraulic kit bash element pack, and it's for Blender, and there's a link to it in the description. So there's a new version of Box Cutter and a new version of Blender, and put together, they're fairly stable, but just remember to save fairly often anyways. I'm pretty excited because Box Cutter just keeps getting better and better, so if you're wondering if that was worth your money, I'm just going to tell you right here, yes, it absolutely was. Another thing to note is that Box Cutter finally has its documentation set up. So if you're a bookworm and you like to look at documentation for hours, for some reason, um, you can do that. I'll have a link in the description to the documentation. So without further ado, let's get started here and I'll just show you the basics. To make your first cut, just click this button here and you'll go into box cutter mode. And with the object that you want to cut selected, you can just drag across the surface and then release the mouse and drag once more to select the depth. And then you can click to execute it. So you're well on your way. Let's just learn a few more things about positioning of cuts. If you want to make a perfectly square cut, you can drag and then hold down shift. That will make sure that your sides are even. And then once again, you can release and drag out the depth. Nice. Also, if you want to make a cut that is centered in the spot that you start, then you can hold down Alt, and that will just center the cut right where you clicked. Once again, you can drag and drop, and there you go, you've got another cut. So I'm just going to take a second here to show you some helpful menus. If you hit View up here, you can select Tool Settings, and that will have this bar up here, which is very useful for just seeing all your box cutter settings. And that's enabled with Hard Ops too, but we're not talking about that just now. You can find another helpful menu when you hit D, and that will show you the different shapes that you want to cut with, and a bunch of other stuff that we don't really need to talk about just yet. And the third helpful menu, you can see if you hit N, and then go down to Tool here. So this is a space that will show you all the hotkeys that are topical, so they'll apply to your specific situation. So if I drag here, you can see that there are a whole bunch of hotkeys that you can use. And it says how to use them, and that's super helpful. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. So to get a bit more precise with the positioning of your cuts, if you drag out your cut here, you can hit L, which will toggle Live View. So what this does, once you click your cut, you can see your boolean object is still here, and you can reposition it more precisely if you need to. Another super helpful hotkey is Tab. So when you drag out an object and hit Tab, that will lock it in place. So you can orbit around and see it a little better. And also, these dots will show up. And these are pretty helpful. You can drag the dots on either end to shape out the positioning of your cut. And this one in the corner here is for the other dimensions of your cut. And then you've got a couple down here, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Another way to work with the two ends of your cut is by hitting tab and then using the keys E or O, which stands for extrude or offset. So if you just want to use the hotkeys, that can be a little bit faster than dragging the dots. So now I'm going to tell you about a couple of different modes you can use when you're cutting in boxes. So if we just started a cut here and dragged it down, we could hit tab to lock it off, and then we can look over here at all these hotkeys at our disposal. So you could do a slice, an inset, or a join, and those are the ones I'm going to talk about now. So Z is inset. You can see it just insets it a little bit here. And if you wanted to make this shape bigger, like the size of your cut, you can hit J to join it and then execute that, and you can see we've got this new segment added onto our cube, which is pretty cool. One of my most favorite features of Box Cutter is the Slice tool, which you can see a little bit better if you add a bevel, which I'm going to do real quick here with Hard Ops. So we've got a nice bevel going on, and if we make another cut and drag it out and hit X, that will slice it. And if we execute that, you can see there's this really wonderful shape here, that just has this seam going through it. Now, you used to be able to do this before with Bool Tool, I think, 
but that was a pretty huge process that took a lot of time and confusion. And this feature alone of Box Cutter is just absolutely amazing. All right, let's talk about a few different features here. So first of all, bevel, if we make another cut here and hit B, you can see you can drag out this bevel here. And if you scroll up and down, that will be the amount of resolution that your bevel has. So if you want it nice and smooth, you can have a higher resolution. Or if you just want some nice cuts here, you can do that. And you can click again. And this is where those extra dots that I told you about before come in. So if you hit tab, you can see up here there's a faint one and a clear one. And if you drag out the clear one, that is your bevel there. And you can scroll up again to make it more high resolution. And then the faint one, if you just click it, will add a depth bevel, which is pretty handy if you just want some nice smooth stuff. Let's talk about the array real quick here. So if we make another cut and drag it out, if you hit V, then you will get a second object and even a third object. And you can scroll up and down to change the amount of instances of the array that you want, which is pretty handy. And sometimes the array will sort of get fiddly and you just won't be able to see anything. So to fix that, if you hit Shift R, that will reset the position of the array and it should all be in your viewport again and you can see what's going on. And then another function that's super helpful is a mirror. So if we just make another cut here and use one, two, or three, that'll do the X, Y, or Z axis. So I'd like to mirror it on the Y axis. So if you hit two, you'll get a nice mirror image on the Y axis. I'm just going to delete this object real quick because we've got it all full of holes and I'm going to get a new object so I can show you the cutting shapes which you can access with D so you can see you can cut a circle if you want and just drag that down then you got a real nice circular shape or if you want you can draw your own custom shape with an end gone so to do this it might be the most helpful if we go into a side view with one or two on the number pad and then just drag and then you get this line here if you want the angle of the line to be more precise, you can hold down control and that will snap it to increments. So we can do like 45 degree angles and 90 degree angles and a few other options in between. So I'm just going to go like this and drag a nice sci-fi looking shape in there. <laughs> and once you've got it this way and you don't want to continue drawing, you can hit tab and that will lock off the shape again. And you can just use this dot to drag it out across your cube. And you can mirror that if you want or do whatever you want to it. So that's all I've got for the basics here. Um, this should get you very far. If you want to see some more in-depth tutorials on different topics, I've got a playlist for box cutter videos. I hope you learned something helpful in this tutorial and I'll catch you again later. Cheers.